Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Game Brigade. I am your host, Brian Greer, and today we are reviewing Legends Untold by Inspiring Games. This is the Great Sewers Novice Set. There are two current novice sets for this game. We are checking out the Great Sewers. For disclaimer, this was sent to me by the publisher for a review, but with all my reviews, there is no biases involved in that. So please stay tuned for the rest of this review. Okay, as a reminder with all my reviews, I generally will do a brief overview of the gameplay mechanics, and then we'll dive in deeper into my final thoughts and conclusions before we give this an official score. Uh, the Legends Untold system is a low fantasy setting Basically an RPG that's going to rely heavily on dice rolling mechanics as you perform different types of tests and checks uh, and, and combat through the game. So the game, what is it about? Well, you are going to be a group of heroes. Each box of the core boxes comes with four different heroes. And these aren't your normal heroes. There's no paladins. There's no rangers. They are very basic. In fact, we have in this box the follower the gutter snipe, the laborer, and the performer. These also are double-sided, so depending on your personal taste of who you wanna play, you can choose to flip these over and play with either character. Uh, but as you can see, these aren't characters that are uh, inherently special, and that's what makes this game a little bit more unique. Every character is kind of a basic person. They are just people of the village that are trying to survive. And in the game lore, the people, those people are surviving this uh, group. They're all leaving a village. And one group is going down to the sewers. The other group is going up to the cliffs. And uh, whatever novice sets you buy, you will play that campaign. In the rule book, there are several scenarios that you can play between. And there's also a, a grand campaign if you want to play through the campaign. There's actually a lot of content in this small box, which is one of the things I very much enjoy about it. So... If we were to select a character, you know, depending on who you want to choose, you can actually decide to take the character in many in many different ways. For example, let's say I chose the laborer. The stat card here will show us the basic attributes down here in the bottom corner, which show us the brawn, chance, handle, reason, will, and charm. These are going to be stat checks that will occur during the game when we occur a um, challenge or a feat that we must accomplish. We will roll and then this will be added to our roll to see if we accomplish the test. In the top corner of the cards is also a skill, which is basically a reference of what my character is good at. And these can be buffed by clothing or additional skill traits. And let's talk about those skill traits. So when you're building a character, unlike a lot of other games where you are kind of shoehorned into picking uh, what the character is designed to do, I can choose the laborer to be anything I want. And it kind of becomes a fun little narrative that you can create for yourself. So I could choose to have my laborer uh, have uh, this pole arm skill. So he has leverage with a pole arm. And then I can also make sure he is very good with teamwork. And then when I go to the weapons, I just want to make sure that I select a weapon that is here because that would be very important. So I would just look for the pole arm. But again, I this is just, uh, me just building a character right off the gate you can select anything he could be an archer if he chose to be an archer i could have him do whatever i want there's no um decision paths in terms of what you want to do and these are weapon skills but you can also do personality traits so let's say we have our laborer who's got a good pole arm but he's also going to be a fey companion so he can have uh, a skill if i ever run into situations with the fey and i've got abilities that i can use throughout the game so there's a whole bunch of different types of upgrades that you could use to customize your characters in any way you want. The freeform aspect of this game is one of its greatest strengths. So once we selected our character, we then are going to decide to move through the, the, the dungeon. Now, this game is made in the box to be one to four players, and there are special rules in here for solo players. If you are a person who doesn't want to play with multiple different avatars or characters, if you only want to play with one hero, there are rules to cover those solo players. Personally, myself as a solo player, I like to have just my one hero that I'm going to play with. I can play with multiple heroes if I have to, but I enjoy being my hero because that's how I uh, engross in the game. And this has rules for that. 
But what's interesting about this game is it, it says age or players one plus. So the game is made to be able to include multiple players. You could eventually even have eight players if you wanted going on this adventure. I have not played anything close to that because the, mo the most in this box is up to four. But if you were to bet to get the other novice set, you can combine all the cards and then have a bigger, more epic campaign as people go through the missions. Okay, so let's say we're, we've got our character now, we're a laborer. We are now in the big drain. You are also going to be able to select a mission. And here we have several different missions. And we'll kind of explain what they are. Uh, the mission will have the episode talking about the episode. You'll then have a breakdown of the setup of what you need to do, any special rules, and then eventually your goal. And then the side here are the deck cons uh, construction. The top side is the normal, if you want to play a normal mode. The bottom side is legendary, if you want to play in a more difficult setting. And you will construct the deck, which is what we have listed over here, to basically match the composition of over here, also following the rules in terms of setup and rule campaign. So if there's special cards you need to include or disclude uh, or take out so that the, uh, the deck is, is complete. And that's what this game is gonna be revolving around this uh, tableau of deck cards over here. So once we begin, we'll find ourselves in the starting location. Generally, it's the big drain. And we'll cover what most of these icons on here mean as we reveal territories. So our party has to decide where we want to go. Right now we're playing as a solo player. We're just a laborer. And so we are going to decide if I want to move. In this screen, you can see that there are three different locations that I can go. And that's what these icons are. And the illumination to, to take uh, dictates how illuminated is that path. If it's dark, uh, we can uh, have some chances to surprise an enemy, but we also have, have more chances of bumping into things and being clumsy. So depending on what you want to do, when we reveal our card, there'll be a skill check we're going to accomplish. And you can choose on the readiness track, which is right here, how you wish to go. If you want to be careless, bold, or alert. Uh, and basically that means when you roll, if you hit between here, you will determine uh, your total outcome. So let's say we're going to move and we're going to go through the dark section. We'll reveal the next map tile. When we reveal a map tile, we look for the feet icon. That basically means where we're going to be meeting together. So we'll meet these two together. And the first thing we would check would be, is there any obstacles or anything blocking our, our way in the path? On this tile, there is none. And so then we check up here to see what is in this room. First, we have to reveal a card from this deck, which matches this symbol. And then we also notice that there's going to be butterflies in here, which we could check the uh, chart here to see exactly what those mean. Um, and then we have uh, some gaseous items. So depending on uh, the scenario you flip here on the, the card, uh, some of these icons can matter. And we'll talk about what's happening in the rest. So the first thing we'd have to do is uh, reveal this first card, which means we go to this question mark and we reveal cards, actually right here, that tell it matches this symbol. And then we re uh, resolve this, the, the example, the test. So this would be a trapped spirit. And it says, uh, a spirit hangs in the air in front of you, bound within a glowing circle. And this is a stage test, which means we have the choice to push our luck in this example. So we would have to, uh, one hero must either test lead with will plus zero or identify reason minus two, which remember we go back to here, our will or our reason. So our reason is better with our laborer, but we're gonna get a minus two penalty if we use our reason. So our will is plus zero. So we most likely wanna use our will in trying to accomplish this test. You would, in any of these test games, you will then roll dice to see if you accomplish it. So for the first one, we have to get an 11. So we roll our dice and we see what we score, which is luckily uh, enough to pass the first example. So in the push to luck though, we can then decide if we wanna try it again and get higher rewards or succumb and fail and potentially get a, a worse reward. If I were in this situation by myself with the plus zero bonuses to my roll, I'd probably stop here and then just say this one, which is, um, it says, uh, your, your efforts have little effect and we burn a time. 
and the time is located with these cards and we'll talk about that a little bit later and then this card is discarded and we move on so that's the basics of the movement you then have other cards here in the room you can see this is an indication of a barrier which means you reveal a barrier which will tell you what you have to do again uh, rolling dice or um, using your ability your stat your stat um, attributes in some manner to basically accomplish this goal uh, what i like about this game is that everything is free form and things can play differently each time um, especially in this manner where you build in your deck and things can happen in a, a random occurrence which is kind of fun and as you explore the dungeon you'll choose to come out in more different ways and as you go, you'll see you start building this actual dungeon from the chart. And which is really cool is that as you build, you're not able to overlap. So uh, a placement like, you know, something like this doesn't work. Uh, and because we did this one, you can see it's starting to jettison out further towards the camera. So your, your, your dungeon will start to become its own life form, which is enjoyable and kind of fun in its own way. Um, so that is the basic gameplay elements in terms of how this game is played. Um, you'll be rolling dice. Combat is very similar. In combat, you will roll and you will refer to your stat skill here to see how you do. And then in terms of that, there are plenty of um, help sheets to talk about combat summary, what happens with different roles. They have an entire turn sequence to assist with that. And basically you're rolling and if you roll a certain damage height, you will deal damage. If you don't, you guys parry. And if you get less than a certain amount, they will damage you. And the health is determined by the stat cards. You will have to turn them upside down when you're dealt damage. And if you have no more stat cards showing, you are unconscious as a group. Um, so that is the basic rundown of the game. There's a lot here, but let's go into my final thoughts and actually talk about what I think about this game as a system. Okay, Legends Untold, I was greatly surprised by, especially because of how small the box is and the amount of content that's in this box and the amount of potential that is there. And I kind of want to emphasize on the term potential because what I see here is a lot of potential in a system to see something really be great and grand, but as it stands, it's just on the precipice of hitting it. I think there could be more here, and I think it's just because the lack of diversity in the cards. So with choosing a specific set, for example, this is the Great Sewers, we're locked into the sewers, our, our maps are all going to be sewer based, there's not going to be a lot of variety in terms of the environments that we're going to experience, and we only have a certain amount of territory ter uh, lands till you've seen them all. So on a campaign where you're going on 16 different missions, there's a high probability that you're going to have seen all of these territory cards at some point, as well as the majority of the obstacles or barriers or, en or enemies as you play. So I definitely feel like the concept here is very strong. I think that there definitely needs to be more for me to want to take this to another level. But what's interesting about this game is they actually include the option to buy booster packs if you want to get some more additional cards to supplement this game, or you can get the other um, box set, which you can then combine all your stuff to make it a giant uh, box game. And so there's definitely that attribute of a modular system, which I think is very unique and very, very interesting for this game. Uh, what I also want to leery people on is there's a lot of dice rolling in this game. So there are times where I love dice rolling. It's part of that old school D&D &D feel. But there are going to be feelings of you're just not hitting the dice. Uh, it's a lot of luck based feelings. And if you don't have many attributes to affect those dice rollings, you could just feel like you're chucking dice back and forth until a result happens either positively or negatively. For example, we got in a situation where we were fighting uh, combat where we weren't dealing damage to the creature, but we were giving advantage to someone else in our party. And so this went back and forth over and over uh, until we were eventually either defeated or we did kill the monster because we eventually did get a damage dealt or we rolled really poorly and dealt damage to ourselves.
Uh, one of the highest points of this game that I really appreciate is the customization of the characters. The fact that I can choose any character uh, on the board here and turn them into the character that I want them to be. I don't have to pick the gutter snipe and make the gutter snipe into an archer, even though it feels like that might be what he wants to do. I could make the gutter snipe into an axe wielding barbarian like guy. Although I wouldn't say barbarian because the the attributes and the weapons you get are very minuscule. For example, you get a crude pole arm. Uh, we get a worn axe. These are definitely not uh, items to write home about. And when you eventually do get loot out of the out of the deck here, the loot isn't anything like you're not going to be increasing your uh, weapon strength by a lot. For example, we got a full wine skin, which discard to give plus two to your next will test. So the loot is not as exciting as a lot of other RPG games you might be where you're trying to grind out loot and make your uh, characters greater and greater. Eventually, you can upgrade these weapons to make it into a bill or into a standard axe, which has a little bit better dam damage rolls. Uh, but you're not going to be, you know, a, pla a paladin with a suit of armor rolling down the sewers. You're still going to be who you are at the core, which is a standard citizen of the village trying to... Uh, reach the final goal, whatever that may be. I'm not going to spoil any storyline here. Uh, but yeah, so overall, I definitely think the game is a great starting game. And I'd really recommend this for someone who wants a small box that has a lot of narrative depth and probably going to get quite a bit of value out of the price of this game. And if you really like the system, I definitely could see someone wanting to pick up both novice sets to combine them to try to get even more value out of the game. So that is my uh, final opinion here on Legends Untold. We're going to score this one a 7.5. Uh, and I'm probably rating this higher in terms of the potential uh, value here in the game in terms of what I can see happening with the system and maybe more so in terms of the potential growth. Uh, I definitely think that the repetitiveness in terms of the creature could draw this down. Um but I do think that the system is unique and engaging enough for me that I enjoyed it quite a bit. So 7.5 is, I feel like, a very fair score for this game. Um, and it could be higher if they had more potential uh, cards or uh, locations. It is kind of a drag that I was going through just a sewer constantly. But the scenarios were unique enough that it was interesting and uh, kept us engaged enough long enough to keep going on the adventure. So this was my review for Legends Untold. Have you played this game or have you thought about picking it up? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys soon. This was a Kickstarter. Hopefully the company decides to launch some more items in this line of games. I would love to see more from them. This is Brian from Game Brigade. I will talk to you all very soon. Yeah.